Can you see my screen now? Yes. Good. Let me type this the chat. Mm, I want to to write in the chat that we are starting now, but I cannot <laughs> open the chat. Mm. I did put chat, so don't worry I, about that. I I I found I, I good. Thank you. Right. So this chapter is chapter uh, twelve, categorical data analysis. And um, yeah, the first thing about it is what is here. Yeah is that the first thing that the chapter says that uh, the categorical data analysis is usually the name that is given for, what is this? For nominal scale data analysis. So but usually are used in the same way or without difference. And then, after this, I mean, the nominal scale data means that um, our type of data, in our data we have categories, or we are categorizing uh, data, which is, which requires different type of analysis, I mean, different type of analysis that if we have like a uh, continuous type of data. So the chapter is start with an, with an analysis called the she square goodness of fit test, um, which is a test for, for saying if we are for testing or proving an, an null hypothesis in a nominal data. Uh, for exemplifying this type of analysis, the chapter uses a data uh, called CARDS, which is, I mean, the, the idea behind uh, this example is that People, I mean humans, have usually problems for choosing randomly uh, things or making randomly uh, choices. So the idea behind here is that we have four cards or four types of cards. We have uh, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, and we ask people, we ask 200 people to choose one type of, of card mentally. And yeah, if our idea is correct, the humans or the people are unable to choose uh, several times or in different iterations to make a randomly choice. I mean, humans, we tend to have a predefined choice. So uh, if someone is asking us to for uh, doing a random, a random choice, uh, we are just unable to really make a, a random choice. So we have this data set where we have different uh, persons and making different choice in different uh, iterations. So, and we want to test, or we, we we want to see that really these choices not randomly, they predefined. So initially, what we have at the moment is this uh, frequency table, where I mean, where we have the number of uh, 
I mean, selecting only the first iteration or the choice one, uh, what, what we have is the number of persons choosing the different number, the different um, cards. And yeah, we can express these in mathematical terms in this way. We have the label, the index number, the mathematical symbol, the R common, and the value, I mean, the number of persons choosing the different cards. So the first thing here, uh, yeah, that we have is that our observed um, number or our observed numbers is equal to the observed um, card one, observe, uh, car, observe number of card two and so on. So yeah, here we have explicitly our observed numbers. Uh, with this in mind, we, yeah, I mean, we have expressed this in a mathematical way. And immediately what we can do with that is establish a null hypothesis versus an alternative hypothesis. Um, our null hypothesis will be that all the four cards are chosen with equal probability. And considering this, the probability or the, our, yeah, our probability of the null hypothesis will be that all the four cards have equal probability to be chosen. So which means that if our probability is summed to one, each card have a probability of 0.25. Um, and yeah. We could, it says, it says that if we could set uh, these probabilities in a different way, depending of our data and research questions. But in this case, the probabilities are equal for the null hypothesis. Um, and having these, we can have two expressions or two mathematical expressions for the null hypothesis and for the alternative hypothesis. We express the uh, null hypothesis as um, P or probability is equal for all the cards. And the alternative hypothesis is that the probabilities are not equal for the four cards. And in R, we are going to set these probabilities or yeah, we are like um, what is putting or defining our prot probabilities in R with this command. Yeah, uh, having this, we now can apply or uh, establish or calculate or estimate a statistic test called the goodness of fit. Um, which basically is comparing how uh, close we are to the null hypothesis, or yeah, how, how close we are of the null hypothesis to see if we could uh, reject it or accept it. So. Yeah, once we define our hypo hypothesis, the next thing to do is estimate our expected fre frequencies. Um, just remembering that we have our observed frequencies here, and we need our expected frequencies where, where I am. Yeah, uh, we need now our expected frequencies, which are estimating, estimated considering the number of observations 
in the way that, for example, the expected frequencies of carb uh, spades, let's say, the expected frequencies of uh, I will be equal to the number of observation uh, multiply, multiplied by the probability. So, yeah, here we are doing that in R. And for our null hypothesis, if we have a sample size of 200 and our probabilities are equal for all the uh, cards, we just multiply it and we have that our expected frequencies are 50, uh, 50 persons for choosing the different cards. So yeah, we, this is quite obvious, but mm, yeah, it's a simple example, but could be more complicated. And we can express this in a table of uh, frequencies where we have our expected frequencies here, our observed frequencies in the second row. And if we just uh, subtracting or obtain the difference between the observed and the expect, we obtained uh, this number, which is called the difference score. And we have it here, the observed uh, subtracting the expected gave us a number, a score, a, what is the difference score. And yeah, that gave us an idea, a gener very general idea of uh, the, the distance between the expected and the observed. We can see that maybe it could be uh, bigger for clubs and the heart, but as we have a negative number and a positive number is a little bit odd to saying something from here. So we just convert it to positive numbers by squaring it this, um, this number. And now we have a more, uh, like more easily or more interpretable number, which I mean, having all these positive is more easily to say that uh, clubs, the difference between the expected and the observed number for clubs is greater uh, in clubs, sorry, between the observed and expected numbers in cards is greater for clubs. And um, yeah, now for obtaining our uh, estimated. The next, I mean, having a, just a, only a unique number and our estimate, we just need to multiply, to divide these uh, numbers between the expected frequency, which is 50 for all categories in our example. So here, is the way of doing this in, in R is just the uh, observe uh, less the expected squaring it, dividing between the expected. And what we have is just, again, our, what it, which is called here, our error scores. Um, this is telling us how big is the mistake or, how big a mistake the null hypothesis made, where is the difference between our expected and observed value. And for having, uh, I mean, this is good, but um, what we really need to have is a unique number that allows to just reject or accept the null hypothesis. So for having this unique number, the uh, thing to do is just sum these values and that is going to give you a value, uh, which is the finally called the goodness of fit statistic. 
and is expressed as uh, she square goodness of bit statistic. And um, yeah. So now the question becomes, it is a big enough value to reject the null hypothesis or what does it mean this number? So for using this value for accepting or rejecting the hypothesis, null hypothesis, um, we need this sampling distribution. Let me see if I have something else in my notes. Yeah, yeah the null hypothesis, the goodness of fit. Yeah, we need the uh, sampling distribution uh, our, of our data. So here is introduced a concept, which is the degrees of freedom. So basically it says that the degrees of freedom is the number of um, variables we have less one, which in our case would be four um, related to our four types of cards, less one, uh, which is equal to three degrees of freedom in our case of data. Um, Wasting. No, I don't know why you say I'm talking about the degrees of freedom. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, I got it. So having defined the degrees of freedom of our uh, data, we are um, produce, use both things, our sampling distribution and our degrees of freedom and the our goodness of fit value for th these three uh, things for accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. So for doing this, we are uh, define the threshold, I mean, the good point for define an acceptable, um, acceptable value. So, in this case, or the most usual, is to configure this threshold as the, um, which is the, the, the percentile, the 0 0.95 percentile, which is the most uh, common use, and in this case, it corresponds to the value of 7.8, and that value is the value of alpha in our test. which thing in a different way would be 0.95. And um, our degrees of freedom is three. And considering this, we can have the, yeah, we can use this command, which is called Q, uh, G, 
SQ to obtain the threshold value of our uh, sampling distribution. And now we can just uh, place our estimated goodness of fit test to see if um, this is below of, uh, or above this uh, threshold. So in this case, since our estimated or our goodness of fit test is bigger than 7.8, we can just reject the null hypothesis. And yeah, we can, yeah, that we can, we can also calculate the exact p-value using rather than the q g s q uh, function, we can use p g s q function for calculate the exact p value. And yeah, this is useful be useful because uh, mm -mm. yeah, it could be seen in terms of probabilities. So we can yeah we can use like subtracting to one the p value and obtain the probability of accepting our null hypothesis in this case as p is less than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. So for doing this in R, uh, the, the author suggests using this function that is part of the their own package, the LS, where is, where is the name? LSR package. I mean, they grow their own function for obtaining or doing this test. For using this is, or using this is quite simple. We just need to input our data into the function. And the result is very descriptive in the way that it, I mean, initially it is saying the, the name of the test, the our input data or our variables. It explicitly says the the null and alternative hypothesis, and produce a frequencies table where we have uh, our observed frequencies, expected frequencies, and the specified probabilities. So, and finally, we have the, our um, G square statistic, our degrees of freedom, and finally, our P value. That again says that we uh, can reject the null hypothesis. So, um, yeah. Uh, it says that in the package, we can just like set, set a different null hypothesis, specifying different frequencies and input it into the uh, function. And as this book uh, is, is like very descriptive, especially for uh, beginners or in data analysis of psychology data is explain how we should report the results of the statistics. Here is like explicitly saying that we could mention the numbers and saying explicitly the test we perform and our obtained value and the p-value and 
yeah, that we use this for rejected the new hypothesis, but explicitly it says that we should mention all the numbers and the name of the test and the results. Mm -hmm. Let me see what do you have. In our... Yeah, uh, now we have another, a different test, which is called the chi-square test of independence or association, which usually is used to see if, if a response is related to the um, to this subject. I mean, to to exemplify this test is using a very funny uh, example or data data set, which is the for, from the program Futurama. In the program Futurama, there is a situation where. Uh, someone wants to differentiate between humans and robots and for doing that establishes a kind of questions where where, where the, uh, a guard bot is just asking which of the following will you most prefer a the option a would be a poppy the option b will be a pretty flower from your sweetie or the option C, a large properly formatted data file. Um, the idea behind these uh, is that if uh, you are a human, you are more prone to select the a puppy or a pretty flower rather than a properly formatted data. So, so but. Uh, that could be that many data analysis being being data analysts being humans one pro probably they will choose uh, a good data set rather than a poppy or a pretty flower so the indeed what the author says that is that we really want to see if this is really a good test for differentiating between humans and robots or or not or it's just useful um for doing this what we want to test uh, explicitly is that if the response given by different subject is related to their species it means that if the response they give are related to um if they are humans or if they are robots. So yeah, here we have our data set where we have our species and their choices. For example, the first species is a robot and they choose flower. And the our summary is here. Here's our mm, frequency table and uh, explicitly we would like to have it separated by species and we produce um, a, ta a cross tabulated table um, with the total and yeah now we want to construct our hypothesis test it's called of independence because, for example, in here, the question will be if the response is associated to the species or is independent. So, yeah. So I say that because uh, having this in mind, is we are going to construct our hypothesis test. So in here we have our observed values with our total and as in our previous test we establish 
we define mathematically our uh, null hypothesis. In this case, this where is the J term means if you are human or you're a robot, in this case, for example, let's say one is uh, for humans. And let the AI term is the choice you did. So for example, the probability of choosing uh, puppies for humans is equal to the probability of choosing puppies of robots. And it's the same for all the uh, different categories. So equally to the previous test, what we would like to have is the expected, we have our observed frequencies, but what we would like to uh, have is our expected frequencies to be compared with our observed uh, values. So in this case, We are estimating this as the total of people, <clears throat> the, our total or total of people that belong to the species. And the true pro J is the true probability of uh, anyone choosing the option I. Um, P is the expected frequency. If there are total people belong to the species J and the true probability of anyone choosing option P, ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, this is the probability of anyone choosing the option I and the total of people that belong to a species J. And yeah, we have the expected frequency for the option I for the species J. So um, yeah, we don't have the value of P for input in the in this expression. But this is something that we could estimate. Uh, in this case, for example, we have the 28 of 180 people selected the flowers. So the natural estimate of the probability of choosing flowers is uh, 28 above 120, uh, 180. And this is 0.16. So in mathematical terms is expressed in this way. And mm -hmm. yeah, this is how we estimate the expected frequency as the product of the row total and the column total divided by the number of observation. So uh, yeah, similar to our previous statistic, is, is the, this is a similar expression to our previous statistics, where we have expected less observed square divided between the expected uh, frequencies. And um, yeah, this is our uh, chi square statistic. And yeah, the only difference is that we have two summing uh, signs, which are indicating that we are summing over both rows and columns. And yeah, th that is the formula for our statistic. Mm.
So as in the previous statistics, the next the next uh, thing to to test our uh, null hypothesis is the degrees of freedom. In this case, is a little bit more complicated. Because usually the as as I mentioned in the previous statistic is the number of variables less the less the one or the number of constraints, but in this case it says that the degrees of freedom is R. It's a contingency table with R or uh, number of rows and C columns contains a total of um r multiply per per c observed frequencies i mean but i mean well it's a bit complicated, but yet it's, it's we we estimate the number the degrees of freedom of our test here. Let me see if I have a better notes here. And now to perform the test or explicitly reject or accept the hypothesis, uh, we can use R. And for doing this, we use the function X tabs for creating our uh, cross tabulating table. And then we use it, I mean, the author suggests a function of the package LSR, we call the association test um, function. And we just need to input the our uh, data and uh, our cross tabulated table or how, how we are how these numbers are uh, related. So, and again, as in the goodness of fit test, this function is very detailed, uh, giving the hypothesis, the observed contingency table, the expected con contingency table, and the test results, and, uh, and the p-value that we're just using for rejecting the null hypothesis. Again, it's explaining how we should report re the results and the points we need to report for a good report. And yeah, basically it's the way for doing this in R. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that was a very dense chapter. Um, yeah. Let me see the next. Well, Uh, yeah, something, another important point in the chapter is the assumption of the test, uh, which is that one is that the expected frequencies sh should be generally rest reasonably large. 
Uh, yeah, which is usually a number larger than five. The independence of the data, the observation should be genuinely independent. And if your data doesn't uh, have or doesn't, yeah, align with this assumption, you need to look for alternative tests. And such as McNamara, Cochran, or the Fisher test, for example. Um yeah, basically it's what for what I uh have.